And just a heads up, we are recording this online session so that Dan will have it for future reference. So. And for everybody else to enjoy in the future. Yes. <laughs> Okay, for the sake of time, if you want to start Dan, and then when more people join, I'll just add them. Great, excellent. Um, welcome everybody. Um, thank you so much, uh, Janan, for, for hosting me um, uh, and for Coldspire to organizing this, uh, this event uh, this morning here in North America and uh, uh, this evening in Switzerland. Uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, show visibility also to Coldspire, which is uh, just recently opened uh, and uh, is um, taking a good spot here in the, the Lausanne uh, Core Kings stage and in Switzerland also. So um, thank you so much. Just to introduce myself quickly, uh, my name is Daniel Jacob. I uh, am originally from Quebec City. Uh, I moved over uh, to Switzerland in 2007. I spent uh, uh, over 10 years uh, in the Lausanne area. Uh, I then traveled the world for about two and a half years, and I am now based in Montreal, where I founded uh, Changing Habit Solution. And this is what's going to be the topic of today, and we're going to use a little bit of a different form. I invite you to a five-course meal of sustainable inspiration uh, that are the stories behind Changing Habits and what it is today. So let me share my screen. So things should be up and ready. Uh, Janan, if, uh, if there's any glitch, uh, just let me know, but uh, I will jo just go according. Um, so essentially today, the five course meal is, we'll start with the appetizer, uh, canapes of starting points with a dash of purpose. We'll follow up with the soup, a consomme of videos uh, with five continent aromas. We're gonna continue with the salad and mixed greens of conferences topped with sizzling engagements. Then we'll talk about the main course, MAC of sustainable solution in its triple bottom line sauce. And finally, we're gonna finish with the dessert, assorted macarons of individual commitments. So let's get started with the appetizer, canapes of starting point with a dash of purpose. Now, this is the section where I use energy or I will talk about energy and how this energy drove the defining uh, of my purpose. And, and this is what uh, personally, so the reason why we will start with a quick question, um, which is what gives you energy? So I would invite you all individually to uh, get some uh, phone, uh, or if you want to open a new tab, uh, to go on slido.com. And when you enter, um, when you see there's a, there's a line there to enter M440. So you can see on the left side of the screen here, I'm just going to get my pointer here um, on the left side here. So this is the uh, uh, slido.com. Just enter the uh, uh, number M440 when you're on the, on the site and just write something about what gives you energy. So think about a recent moment when you got something that energizes you. Is it doing sports? Is it eating? Is it meeting with friends? Anything that really energized you. So just take a minute and enter your, we'll see. Normally it should, it should start to appear. Ah, there you go. We got, we got one. Surfing with friends. Just think about something that really energized you, that, that motivated you, you get, that give you energy. We'll wait maybe more 10, 15 seconds. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now it starts coming in. <laughs> so baking, nature, ideas, uh, doing karate, surfing with friends, spending time in nature. Um, we, we might have others coming in, but that's the whole point is to, is to reflect on what's the fundamental 
thing that gives you energy. And the idea is to maximize this source of, of energy uh, motivation. So if we go into on my end, what that meant was the energy source was being in nature. So either um, in, for, in the forest, on top of a mountain or underwater. And the second thing that really gave me energy was to inspire people to make positive change, either talking directly one-on-one -on -one or having interactions with a younger audience or talking in front of a larger crowd that I can see uh, are, are giving feedback or, or, or providing uh, input and are being uh, to some extent encouraged to, uh, to change their habits. So these are the two source of my energy. Now, at the main time, um, I could see that online and on social media and in the news and, and even talking to friends uh, that the world is seeing uh, a lot of environmental issues. And, and this is uh, a bit draining in a way. So it got me thinking is to say, well, how can I define my purpose into maximizing my energy level and then solving this issue on the environment? Because nature being in nature, being one of my energy source, I need to protect the, the source of that energy. And at the same time, if I can do it by inspiring people to make positive change, then I maximize the energy that it brings me. So it, that led me to define uh, the purpose that I have, the kind of the red line uh, that I want to make sure that I'm on going forward. And it is to design a world where the environment does not need to be protected. And I want to do that by engaging 1 billion people to make positive changes. 1 billion people is about roughly a little bit more than 10% of the population, or at least in the population growth as it is. And um, we always see that 10% uh, is usually a tipping point. So when you reach a certain volume of people or critical mass, then things starts to happen much faster in a snowball effect. So this is the purpose. Now, how to do this? Um, I really got inspired by a famous quote from Che Guevara, uh, which is, let the world change you and then you can change the world. And I said, well, how can you uh, match the purpose and the quote from Che Guevara, which I think was quite inspiring. And this led to, led, led to the mission that was to travel around the world to make videos about what other people are doing in favor of the environment and then highlighting what they are doing to try to inspire other people to do the same. So this is the fundamental, the foundation of changing habits. The purpose aligned with the mission and this is why I decided to quit uh, my very comfortable life in Switzerland after being there for about eight or nine years. And then I, I set up, uh, so I wrapped up my entire life, uh, put that into a, a backpack, bought a one-way ticket uh, to the uh, other side of the world and started a trip in Auckland, New Zealand. And after 55 hours of travel, I found myself lying on the top bunk bed of a dorm in Auckland wondering, what the hell have I done with my life? Now, it's not because I had done a lot of thinking into what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. Um, the video making, I had, I had bought the platform, uh, the, the, the laptop to do video editing. I had bought um, the, um, the camera to do uh, filming, but I didn't know where to start, who to talk to, how to get about it. I had never traveled on my own or traveled freestyle either. So I was in a very weird state of mind where as much as I knew what I wanted to do, I didn't have the wherewithal or the capacity or the skill or the knowledge on how to, to do it. So this is the situation I want you to understand I was in so that when we go to the soup, you'll understand how we unblocked it a little bit. It took about three months of traveling before I wind up in Sydney, Australia, where I met this guy. Now, Kiefer is an important part of the changing habits story because at the beginning, I didn't really know how to get started and to get the video um, uh, off the ground. And when I talked to him about my project or my ideas, at least, uh, he said, you really want to make videos. Um, you need to tell stories. And he literally did what you see on the picture. He took my camera, shoved it in my face, and he says, Dan, now you're going to tell a story and, and tell a video and, and tell people uh, things that you need to you know, do on the environmental side uh, to bring about solutions. And the first video wasn't that great. It was just me in that shady balcony uh, trying to tell a story about how back in the corporate, my corporate life before I had brought my the entire staff 
uh, of the office inside the washroom to show them how to dry their hands with only one sheet of paper instead of three to attempt to save paper and how on a grand scale of things it does make an impact. Um, and after doing this first sequence, he looked at it and he was like, that's shit, do it again and do it again and do it again. And much more than having one sequence of video, he says, what's the name and, and which platform are you going to use? So he really helped me into defining what I had already in my mind, but I had to craft and, and make it concrete. And then more, more importantly, at the end of this conversation, he says, one thing you got to do is commit to yourself, make a commitment to, to, um, to yourself to make this um, video or channel go off the ground? Is it going to be one video per week, per month, per two weeks? And that's when I said, okay, I committed from then on to do one video per week while traveling. And I did not know then how big of a task that wind up being, but two and a half years later, it's now a YouTube channel with more than 65 videos uh, from 30 countries around the world with great people uh, interviewed that are doing amazing things about the environment both on an individual basis, but also on a business and strategy basis. So this is uh, the changing habits movement. So this is the foundation uh, of changing habits. Now, just a few examples of how these videos came about. Uh, the first example is uh, the Knox Bar in Sydney, Australia. So the Knox Bar, he did a urban uh, beehive. So on the rooftop of his bar, and the way this video came out uh, was I was sitting at the bar and I saw that in my drink, uh, I had a, a honeycomb uh, wax uh, with um, honey in it. And I was like, where do you, where do you get this? Uh, and he says, it's actually on the rooftop. I've got the beehive. And he was doing it for environmental reasons because bees are important for the ecosystem. Um, at that point, I didn't have any uh, changing habits videos yet, at least not interviews. So I was a bit shy, but I said, got to do it. Um, and I asked him, I says, do you, uh, I'm, I'm launching this movement. I want to do videos about the environment. Would you be interested in, uh, in being uh, in the first interview? And, and that's how the first video of the uh, Urban Bees Knox Bar uh, came to life. Another example is uh, when we were going to Indonesia in, in Kiri Chabangan in, in um, uh, I was just in a bar and, and I saw that in the, in the back window behind the barman was a, a, a logo a sticker in, on the on the um, a mirror that said refill Gilly. And I said, oh, you, you guys are using refillable bottle system. So there must be some kind of sustainability thing going on. Um, as it turned out, uh, after meeting the owner and doing an interview with him, uh, he was super active in his, his community. He was bringing uh, a lot of different bar owners and, and business owners together to think about the future of the island because the island is, is a very small ecosystem. So it's very quick, especially with the, the number of tourists, uh, to destroy it very fast. So he was very aware of this, he even did a recycling center. Um, so all of this because of the sticker uh, behind the bar that led to uh, this conversation happening. Uh, another video that we've done uh, is in Safa, Vietnam, uh, a, a beautiful area. Uh, we were staying at, with a, a local family there and we saw that they were making beautiful tablecloth and table runners uh, and, and, and handbags. Uh, out of old uh, traditional celebration uh, garments. And we were very impressed and uh, we decided to just make a video because this is a great idea of how to upcycle clothes or give a new life to old clothing. So essentially all these videos and many more on the platform are all about um, people deciding to embed sustainability at their core of their operation and doing it in a financially profitable way. It, it's just smart business. And funny enough, it's not that these people that I met were necessarily uh, uh, searched for or anything. It was just talking about the ideas, talking about the changing habits movement, talking about making videos and highlighting other people's ideas that made those uh, meetings possible. Now, this is more on the, on the interview side of the videos changing habits. Now, there's also a few videos out there uh, that, I, that we made. Uh, that are based on individual habits that you can have as a person to make a difference. Um, while we were traveling in East Africa with um, a couple, a French couple, French Canadian couple, friends of ours, um, we saw that they were using a lot of homemade products. And at one point we we're like, hey, you've got a lot of them here. Like, can you, can you make a video to show us how many and, and how you can do it and how, if it's difficult or, or easy to do. Um, and they had a smaller portion of the number of, of homemade products they make and they had no less than 12 different ones like 
deodorant and, and shampoo bars uh, and uh, mosquito repellent, uh, uh, toothpaste. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy the amount of, of homemade products they were, they were doing themselves. Uh, so we did this video while in Madagascar. Uh, then obviously an easy one you can do while you're traveling is uh, picking up trash. So cleanups everywhere, Vietnam, Switzerland, India, Iran, um, Poland. I mean, a lot of places, pretty much everywhere we went. Uh, but this in particular, this image is from uh, the Kombu area in Nepal. Uh, we highlighted a lot of high mountain initiative in that particular video, uh, but also we did some cleanup. So this is an easy thing you can do. And shout out to our friends um, in Switzerland called My Green Trip. Um, you can see it online on, on, on this post, among others. Their concept is about uh, um, inspiring people to do uh, cleanups all over the world. And finally, um, your uh, eating habits are huge, uh, have a huge impact on the environment. And if you decide to not necessarily go vegan or vegetarian, this already just reducing the amount of meat you eat has uh, a lot of impact on the environment. So we decided to do a three video series. Uh, this one was in Thailand about traveling and uh, eating vegan while traveling. Now, this brings us to the salad, um, a mixed greens of conferences topped with sizzling engagement. Now throughout the world tour, the idea was to make videos about other people, uh, other people's ideas and highlight them online uh, for people to, uh, to watch them. Now, the problem with that is that you, the videos that were created are thrown into a, how can I say, a constellation of social media content that's produced every day. So it's very hard to bring people's attention to it. So I thought that having a direct interaction with people, the same way I'm doing right now in a kind of a virtual way, would be a better way to interact directly with people and trying to inspire them uh, to take action and to bring, basically bring sustainability at their level and make sure that they can start having an impact. So this conference idea started as I was traveling towards Europe and um, I reached out to Gaetan, which you can see here, we, we had started a, a, a startup in um, cert, sorting solutions or so recycling sorting solutions back before the, the world tour. And um, I contacted him and I said, look, I'm, I'm looking to do a conference. I really wanna engage with people directly. And he says, matter of fact, I am in collaboration with the WWF, so you can do a, um, a conference in Lausanne. So I said, great. So I, I redirected uh, my route to uh, go through Switzerland. And as I was heading towards Lausanne, uh, I couldn't help but to go up mountains. This is in the Brig area. And I was dragging up my girlfriend uh, all the way to the top of the mountain. But then what, what happened there is that I um, asked this gentleman, Olivier, uh, to take a picture of us. So he took that picture. And as I was talking about, we, we started talking, and as he, um, as he asked me, he says, ah, uh, you do changing habits uh, movement, you do videos about environmental. Uh, and I was telling him about doing a conference in Lausanne. Uh, he said, as a matter of fact, I'm the headmaster of a school in Brig. It's, um, it's a gymnasium. So, uh, I think for people in Switzerland, you know what gymnasium is. Uh, for people in North America, it's, it's like uh, just a pre-university level. Um, and he said it would be very nice for you to come in and to give them a sense of inspiration uh, to basically in, like, t start taking actions on their own. So two weeks later, just like that, uh, uh, we did two conference back to back uh, or to over 100 students. Um, engaging them into thinking that regardless of the industry or the business that they would wind up working in, there was opportunity to make positive change. That now they could bring awareness, so they could raise awareness to what can be done and, and bridge the gap towards taking action. But not only action in their professional life, but also in their personal life, which leads to the sizzling engagement part of this third course, which is Every conference is, and uh, we ask the audience to uh, commit to making one positive change in favor in the environment because we're showing everybody that making one small change every day has a great impact over the year. So just a few examples to illustrate this. One person reducing its shower time five to 10 minutes per day has an impact of about 38,000 liters less water per year. That's enough to fill an above ground pool, which is pretty huge. One person reducing their meat consumption from seven to three days a week 
that's about 30 kilogram less meat over a year. That's the equivalent of a little pig, quite literally. One person using a reusable water bottle or a glass instead of 12 single use plastic is approximately 600 fewer or less plastic bottle in a year, which is enough to cover a downtown loft. I mean, that's significant. One person traveling by bike to work or to school, that's 325 liters less gasoline, which is equivalent to about 50 times Lausanne Geneva by car or 10 times Montreal, Quebec. And finally, one person reducing from three to one sheet of paper to dry their hands, that's about 500 less sheets of paper every year. And this is definitely the best way to save a tree. So essentially, the bottom line is we've been showing how simple everyday habits can have a significant impact every single year. And the key is, here are the examples for one individual make, making a change. But if you take a big group of people making individual commitments, the change really starts to aggregate and to have significant impact. Here's a graph, is a table of 117 people that made engagement through one of the audiences we had. So for example, 25 uh, people committed to reducing their uh, hot water consumption. That was equivalent to 400,000 liters of hot water per year. 25 people reducing their uh, plastic bottle usage, 6,000 less plastic bottle over the year. Plastic bags, straws, paper, uh, paper towel to dry hands. I mean, the compounded effect, that's only year one of only 100 people. The compound effect is already massive. So what we're seeing is that we're changing the, the way people think about the environment by engaging them to be part of the solution. We're bringing together positive environmental impact. And, and this is the key here, is that we're also saving money. So it's a cost-effective way of having individual impact. So that's the notion of triple bottom line. People, planet, profit. You're generating positive results on all three of these key criteria. And bottom line, the sum of our individual effort can eventually flatten the curve of climate change and environmental damage. How? When you start integrating personal changes yourself, you can bring your personal habits change to your professional habits. That means strategy, that means orientation of the company, that means the product and services, that means the way you operate the business or the way you do your work, which leads us to the main course, the MAC of sustainable solution in its triple bottom line sauce. So this is really the core of what changing habits solution is today. And this is the core of our uh, actions um, where we are right now. And this kind of business solutions mindset started in uh, Lausanne or near Lausanne, actually that's, uh, that's pretty much near Vevey uh, in Switzerland. And that story goes, uh, uh, we were just walking along uh, the Lake Le Mans here um, uh, one day, uh, two days before we did the first conference in Lausanne, and uh, we happened to meet Kevin. Now, Kevin was playing guitar, and he was playing Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles, and I, and I knew the song, so I just started singing along with him. And after he was done, he was raising money for, for children um, uh, that needed medical care. Uh, and we just started talking uh, about changing habits and, and, and the, um, uh, the individual habits, uh, the compounded effect that could have dramatic change uh, as, a, um, as, a, as a population, as countries, and overall in business also. And he says, that's funny because uh, Kevin told me, my, he says, my daughter started to do zero waste living. And he says that, well, zero waste was a bit uh, intense for me. He says, I, I didn't necessarily want to go that to that extent, but he said, I started to be more conscious about what I bought in, in the store, uh, maybe less packaging or maybe using less uh, plastic bags, et cetera. And that eventually had an impact on how I did recycling also. And he says, this is the, the, the personal changes I've done, but then I realized that I could do the same at work. And Kevin happened to be uh, an executive at Nestle and he was overseeing seven manufacturing plants. So when he bridged a gap between his personal habit and his professional habits by embedding zero waste principles inside the strategy of the manufacturing plant he was overseeing, they went from 3,500 ton to 350 tons a year in five years. And they did that in a profitable way. So 
I meant tons of waste, huh? just to make sure. So 3,500 tons of waste to 350 tons of waste in the, in the seven manufacturing plants combined over five years. And they did that in a profitable way. And all it took in his case was that his daughter influenced him to personal habits and for him to bridge the gap between professional, uh, sorry, personal and professional habits. Now, I started looking into it because I thought that if all it took was for people to realize that these solutions exist, then it's just about convincing them and crafting the right narratives, the right strategy, the right approach uh, to make this positive change happen on a business level. And I, and I started seeing that all the solutions are out there on top of what we had already uh, captured on video as we were going along the world tour. So essentially, if we give a few examples of companies that embedded sustainability in their core um, business model as we went along, and these are all videos that we have uh, available on the platform. Uh, the first example is Ants in Your Pants, which is a, a reusable cups cafe chain in uh, Perth, so in the west coast of Australia. Um, so we met these guys and their story is pretty amazing. The, the, it's not even the owner that had the original idea of doing a reusable cup cafe uh, only. So they, they don't serve single use um, um, coffee cups. Um, he said, the idea didn't come from me. He said, it's the staff that convinced me to do this. And originally his original response to doing reusable cups only was, you guys are gonna go crazy. Uh, we're gonna run out of business. People are gonna go elsewhere uh, and they won't like it. But exactly the opposite happened because they took a statement, because they, they said, we're going to build our business in a coffee shop way, but we're just going to twist it with a, a, a dash of purpose uh, to align with uh, what we believe is important. So reducing waste, um, they were massively profitable. They had a lot the nonstop uh, lines of people showing up. People actually went from far away in the city just to go to their uh, coffee shop or making detours to go to their coffee shop to use their reusable coffee mugs and make a statement that they wanted this or things to change. And it was, it was so profitable that he also opened uh, two or three other coffee shops uh, with the same uh, purpose and, and, and tagline. And he also had an immense um, media exposure, which is amazing. So the triple bottom line of implementing a zero, uh, so a reusable cups cafe only um, environment is that he empowering the staff to propose ideas that are aligned with um, re uh, having a positive impact on the environment. He saves thousands of cups. That's the planet um, result or the triple bottom line and the profits that he got immense media exposure and client success. So it was a very profitable way of doing things. Now the second the uh, um, example is a Nabaya uh, beauty salon in, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, so what's crazy about this uh, story is that uh, you wouldn't think that a hairdresser or a beauty salon isn't, could necessarily embed sustainability, but the, these girls made an amazing job at embedding so many different sustainable initiatives within their operation from uh, doing compost to capturing the water uh, in the gutters, so the rainwater, uh, they separated uh, the hair dyes uh, from the water to not pollute the water. They recycled all the containers. They tried to do refillable containers for their beauty products. And, and one amazing item that they had on their list was they were using the hair of the people to make oil spill patches. So they would essentially use the hair to um, uh, solve oil spills or to absorb the oil uh, in the water. So this is something I didn't know about. Um, and they engaged the whole staff in proposing ideas. So again, on the people, uh, they engaged the staff through team effort, they had a purpose-driven management, and they even attracted past workers back to their salon because everybody wanted to go and work for them. Um, on the planet side, all these sustainable ideas they've uh, implemented have a massive compounded effect uh, year after year. And on the profit side, they had a growing client base and media exposure in the same way as the coffee cup. The last example is a, is a resort in Kenya, in the Masai Mara, so the beautiful uh, park where you see the, the great migration. Um, we were astonished of, again, how many sustainable initiatives they put in place from using uh, wind energy or harvesting wind energy and solar energy to pump water, 
Uh, and one of the, the really nice things, they, so they, they, they're planting their own food. Uh, one other initiative they did, which was really cool, is they had those um, delivery boxes. They would uh, put that into a, a water, so to melt it down, and then they would press those cardboard bricks that they would use for the fi as firewood, as a replacement for firewood, to avoid using the, uh, the neighboring trees or, or burning wood because it's very scarce in the park. Uh, so that was, that was amazing, the number of initiatives that they've done. And the triple bottom line, again, that they uh, generate from that is that they were empowering locals with sustainability job and inspiring tourists to care uh, through awareness, through their action about uh, what they were doing uh, to protect the environment. Now, again, on the planet side, protecting the environment with a myriad of sustainable initiatives, uh, like the ones I mentioned. And finally, the profit is that they had positive word of mouth, positive media exposure, and they were saving costs through their initiatives. So essentially what it tells you is that even in saturated markets, like the coffee cups, uh, the coffee chains uh, and coffee shops in Australia, there's one literally every corner. Ants and your pants was able to, uh, in a saturated market, step up and be recognized uh, and, and by doing things differently and adding value to it. The same for the hairdresser and beauty salon in Sao Paulo and the same for resort in, in Kirima camp. Um, in the Maasai Mara in Kenya. So that's how you can take an edge on the market by doing things differently and aligning um, this with your purpose. So this is the core of what changing habits does today. So I'm just gonna really, really briefly explain how we help companies embed sustainability in their core strategy. So what we do is we try to take any companies and then tell them what sustainability means for them, and then come up with a list of solutions they can start implementing to start generating results. So how do we do this? First of all, we identify the solution from a risk perspective. So you wanna reduce your risk. You have solutions that come out of it. And you have the opportunity, like seizing a growing market for sustainable uh, products and services. And then you try to qualify and quantify them. Then you try to prioritize. So out of all these risk and opportunity solution that we've highlighted, which are the top ones that we can start implementing that will start generating results. So you learn by results rather than just setting one course and, and sticking to it. So you, you try to prioritize your top solution and then you build a business plan to see if it's viable uh, to start investing money in it. And then finally, you deploy a, an agile iterative method to deploy the initiative. So you learn by doing, you start iterating actions and you start implementing solutions. And then as the results come in, you implement more. So you just get the, the ball rolling essentially. And I like this quote that, uh, from Bob Willard, uh, a big name in the sustainability world. He says, resist the urge to set targets too early. Learn by iteration success rather than predefined objective. And this is really important is start doing things that generate triple bottom line results, and then you'll be able to do more and inspire other businesses to do the same. So this basically sums up what changing habit is. We're doing sustainable strategy where we're helping companies identify sustainable business solutions that generate a triple bottom line. And uh, you can see on the website that there's a short video to explain this engagement workshop where we engage professionals and, and students with the aim uh, to have them taking part of the solution, taking part in the solution and by, by, to their commitments. And finally, a list of uh, the movement, which is uh, the origin of our company. And uh, the, as we talked about, 65 videos from over 30 countries on environmental ideas from all over the world. Now, what this shows you is that Everywhere on the planet, there's amazing people doing great things. On all five continents, there's people that care enough to embed sustainability in their business model. And we can see now that it's generating income, that it's profitable and financially viable to do so. So the first step is to invite you to change a personal habits and to start iterating through what you can do as a person. And then as soon as you transfer this personal habits change into what you can do as a professional, then you start aggregating and, and improving and generating even more positive results. So this is um, regardless of your background, of your culture, of your, your job, of your interests, 
you can do something individually and professionally to make a difference. And now this is where I want to lead you as the last part of our five course meal, which is the assorted macarons of individual commitments. And that's when you come into play to become part of the solution. So again, I would ask you to, um, and then I would copy this link here in the chat. And I would ask you to, I'm just going to expand this. And then I would ask you to go on the link that's provided and maybe Janan, you can help me here. I just want to go in the chat. There you go. And then I'm going to type, there you go. So if you guys click on this, I'm going to run you through the um, very short engagement form that I would like you to fill in because the important part is to say which type of personal habit would you like to change? It's really small and the only restriction on the personal habit change is that try to have it quantified. So we saw examples, reducing shower time by five minutes, um, switching my uh, single use plastic bottle for a reusable one, uh, buying a reusable mug instead of taking single use. And it's just about being aware of your everyday habits and just changing one. So you have a, a whole list here. Uh, you can select from the list. And the only um, question here would be if you can quantify it on a weekly basis, what does it mean? Um, you can do that on uh, the following line uh, right here. So here you, you choose in the drop list uh, which habit you want to change. And then in the second part, you can say, hey, uh, three bottles, uh, plastic bottles per week less, etc. cetera. Um, and then once you've done this, so very simple task, the second one is what, what type of professional initiatives can you take on? And again, very simple. It, it can go from, you know, plastic reduction at work, waste reduction, reducing transport, maybe doing remote working. I mean, I know you guys are probably all remote working right now. This um, uh, presentation being online, uh, is also part of, of, of reducing the, the transport impact. Uh, it can be water consumption. And then, and then in the later part of the options here, you have interesting ones where you can talk about uh, looking at your supply chain. So where do you source your product? Can you source more locally? Can you source more ethically? Um, is there a sustainable project like cost efficiency that can be done? And what's amazing is I was just talking yesterday to an individual. She's working for a, a, a event um, uh, the Paralympics committee. And she says, well, we're not particularly sustainable. Uh, but then I, I got her thinking, I says, what are you doing already? And she says, well, we did replace all the plastic bottles last year. Uh, and we're not handing over flyers anymore. I said, well, that has an impact already. There's already things being done. So if you can just take that, quantify the impact in kilogram or quantity of papers not thrown away or plastic bottles saved, this is already something that as a business, you can start reporting on. This is something that people can understand. And this is something that most people are already doing. So you can think of something in your professional life of what is already being done. And you can see from the list here, if you can take a commitment. So I'm going to uh, leave you uh, a few minutes to do that. I'm going to open the chat here. If you have any question uh, about how to fill this in, uh, just go ahead. I'm going to leave you uh, three, four minutes, and then we're just going to go uh, straight to the conclusion. And while you're doing this, um, I'm also going to make a commitment myself. Personal habit. I'm going to try to make my own product. I made a video about this, but uh, I've never tried uh, yet making how, uh, my own product. I, I do a lot of other things like composting and, and planting and, and making your own, uh, creating your own food, but my own products, I haven't done it. Now I'm going to reduce shampoo bottles uh, to zero by making my own shampoo bar. from, I would say, what, 
five, uh, five per year. So instead of five per year, we'll, we'll go down to, to zero and then we'll make your own. Professional initiative, I will try to influence, inspire others to make positive change in their business. And what is the professional you want to take on? I want to say build business plans for sustainability. There you go. And then we're going to use the changing habit strategic model to help us um, implement or influence and inspire others. So we're going to submit this. So maybe I'll leave uh, another three, four minutes uh, to see if um, people um, can complete uh, this form. It's a very simple engagement, uh, but as we've seen before, simple everyday thing, make an annual impact. And then that, if repeated every year, is compounded. And if that is, again, served to influence other people in the meantime, that's an even greater impact. Just another two minutes, maybe. Just while you're uh, you're finishing this up, um, here are the the different uh, media handles we have. Um, a website up there. I invite you to have a look at it uh, to see what, what we do in, in a nice compounded way. Uh, we're also carbon neutral or even carbon positive as a company. We did our uh, inventory or emissions inventory um, last year and we, we try to reduce as much as possible even though our, our uh, carbon footprint is not that uh, big, but uh, we bought enough uh, so we, we're trying to reduce first, and then and then the ones we can't reduce, we we offset, and we offset it more than what we produce. So that's also something that on a professional uh, level you can start um, thinking about is is offsetting your uh, GHG, uh, so greenhouse gas emissions, so CO two emissions, uh, and you know your carbon footprint, and uh, other media handles. Um, now maybe another uh, two minutes, and then uh, we can take questions if um, the chat is available um, let me open the chat so I'm the only one who, who um, put a message in there if you have any questions um, throw them up there so we can we can uh, discuss um, let's open the let's open the floor for questions right now I don't know if there's anyone uh, out there Hi, Daniel. Hi. So, uh, nice uh, presentation. Uh, thanks. So, uh, I got a question. Uh, what, oh, sorry, uh, cell phone. Uh, what is the objection you got or you get when you um, are uh, pitching your project to an uh, enterprise or organization? What, what is the, ba the biggest um, kind of um, yeah, the challenge you have and uh, objection you get from them? That's a great. That's a great question. Uh, thank you, Philip. Um, there's there's multiple ones. Huh? Um, uh, I think that uh, the the first one is that the impression of from a company standpoint is that anything that has to do with sustainability costs money. Uh, so it's not something that can be financially viable. Um, and on top of that, I think there's a there's a, a very uh, a significant miscomprehension of what sustainability even means. Uh, a lot of people are like, what is that sustainability? Is it, is it carbon? Is it water? Is it uh, uh, forests? Is it so even saying sustainability, people will be like, uh, what are we talking about? So the first step is always to introduce what sustainability is. So the triple bottom line is a very easy way to say it. You know, people, planet, profit. Just follow those three KPI and instead of just profit. And this will already be like, oh, okay, there's, there's ways to generate other type of result. So this is the first step. And then it's showing how maybe other companies have embedded sustainability in their 
business model and how they've been profitable uh, doing that. Um, there's a lot of uh, 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 circular economy also is a very interesting one is to say you produce a product at the end of its life, you re-inject the product in the, in the production chain. So you're, you're using less new material and it, that you can save cost that way. Uh, there's also um, efficiency uh, gains. Uh, uh, the, I mean, I was seeing a graph the other day in Quebec. Uh, uh, companies or the entire energy that's produced, 55% of the energy produced is wasted through and, and mostly in manufacturing uh, because there's inefficient methods, inefficient process. Uh, uh, the, the, the machines are not up to date or not tuned correctly. Uh, so there's so many improvements that can be done only on efficiency gain. And then you can start talking about products and service and attracting a new client base. And uh, you know, our generation is a bit more conscious. Then you say, how can we uh, tailor our products and services to these people? So objections are, are lack of knowledge and uh, uh, inertia. You know, inertia is, is we, uh, a lot of people were telling me, you know, if you want to, if you want to sell sustainability, you need to make the pain of status quo greater than the pain of change. And, and this is an ongoing journey. It's an uphill battle, but it's uh, that, I, sorry for the very long answer, but that's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if it answered Thanks. your question. Thanks. Thank you, Philip. People, planet, profit, love that. Thank you, Grace. Um, does, does anybody have a, 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 another question? Okay, Janan, I don't know if you want to um, take the microphone to, uh, to close up. Sure. Can you hear me? Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dan, so much for the presentation and for sharing your inspiration and your travel and actual solutions that we can do. Um, I made a whole list of things that I plan on doing personally, as well as at Cospire. So I hope everyone else has a Can list. Can you share one? Can you share one, Janan? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, the easy, well, not the easy one, but one that I'll do at Cospire, I will reduce the plastic that we use for, um, for like the milk awesome. bottles for the coffee. And then I'll go next door to Terre Doise. They have glass bottles of milk. Awesome. So I'll do that. And then also I will like buy all of our snacks and our desserts from either a local vendor or a local grocer instead of going to Cooper Micro. Awesome. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I did, I, did, uh -huh. I did put you on the, the spot a little bit here. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm, I was ready. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so thank you so, so much, uh, Janan, and, uh, and your co-working space uh, to allow me to uh, make this presentation today. You've done a great work of, uh, of diffusing it online, and, and uh, you're doing a great job also in your community. Um, I, I'm really thankful to have the opportunity to talk out uh, loud to people. And, and honestly, if you guys have any questions, just feel free. Uh, I like having those conversations. If, if you want to just reach out and be like, hey, I was thinking about different things uh, for, my, for my business or in my professional life. Uh, let's just take 15 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, you know, reach out, send, a, send an email to all or a message to any of those media handles so we can start having a little conversation. A 15, 20 minute conversation usually is enough to at least highlight one, two, five things uh, that you can start discussing. My point is to empower all you guys within your structure to make positive change happen, to implement sustainability. So, I mean, just get started. It's now is better than ever, right? Yes, thank you so much. Great. And like Dan said, if you all have any, um, well, I'm actually curious to know what others chose as habits that they want to change. Yeah, is, is, can <laughs> we, do we have a, like two, three minutes? Does somebody want to, to, to share either personal or, or professional habit change? I, I, I know people are a bit shy sometimes, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, 
uh, for me. Uh, I will um, start um, working from home uh, more and more. So uh, we are all in that uh, in this situation now, but uh, this is something that uh, I want to do in a long term period. So it will reduce my uh, impact on transportation. And and for question, um, would you were you taking your car to work before? No, before I use uh, public transport or ah, okay. bicycle, but uh, it will uh, reduce even more where yeah pack. You're already doing pretty good, though. <laughs> uh, and and on on the um, so uh, so so that's like kind of like bridging the gap between and and then you think there's at so at during at your work or or, or the, the 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 company you're working for is there something that you think could be also thought about at the office? Yeah. Uh, actually, I I changed. Uh... I changed uh, my employer uh, since two months, and uh, okay. I, never, I never saw the office. So <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a bit a bit early to implement uh, new ideas then. Thanks. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. All right, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much, guys. Um, you know, feel free to reach out. Thank you, Dan, and Coach Fire to host this event. Thank you, Dan. Always open to a further chat. Perfect. I'm wishing everyone a great day. Great. Have a good one.